Good morning, Woodson, and welcome to The Morning Show. I'm Avik. And I'm Arush. We're smoothly moving the show to Learning Seminar now and once a week. We hope to see you here every week on Thursdays and Fridays. But today is Wednesday. I know. We couldn't wait to get started. Call me over anxious. We've got a lot coming up on this Wednesday show. Kyle has a story about Woodson students voting next week. And there's news about Governor School. And our partnership story will replay with audio this time. Stick around. Lots of, wooden, lots of Woodson students are old enough to vote in this upcoming election on November 2nd. It's a close governor's race between Terry McAuliffe, the Democrat, and Glenn Youngkin, the Republican. So close, so close, we've seen national interest in the outcome. Our reporter Kyle checked in with some 18-year-old seniors to see how they feel about casting their ballots for the first time. What would stop you from voting? Nothing. Not even the law? <laughs> no. Each election, ages 18 to 25, always has the lowest voter turnout. Here's Mr. Hetler on why everyone should vote right when they're eligible. And when you look at people like um, former Secretary Powell, who just passed away last week, you know, as an example, we have folks who have sacrificed so much. So for people not to vote, it just seems a little... Um, kind of unfair of not holding up the end of the bargain, you know, to keep our country thriving and participating. Why should teens in particular vote? So it's important, I think, to get started when you're first eligible so that hopefully you will continue throughout your life. Fortunately for me, I was able to ask some 18-year-olds in the building, what would stop them from voting? Because funnily enough, a lot of them are voting. I wouldn't vote if I didn't really know who I was voting for or what the policies of that person or each party is. Um, I feel like I'm just not as informed as I should be. Um, if I was scheduled for work that day, that wouldn't stop me from voting. And also, if I didn't have a way to get to my voting location. I think that a lot of teens don't know how to register to vote. You catch the similarities in their responses? Jada and Anna said that teens may not have a developed and informed opinion on who to vote for, while McKaylee and Sophia mentioned problems with registration and scheduling. Well, here's Mr. Hetler on how to become informed even when you're not a teen. I think students uh, should inform themselves as soon as they can start to read. Um, and as soon as they're old enough to listen to their parents or people they trust and respect um, and their views. And how they should uh, read as many different sources as they can. They should talk to as many different people as they can, uh, including people that think differently than them. Uh, most people vote the way their parents did um, or do. And so the more you can talk to people that have different points of view and different backgrounds, I think the more informed. There's a great website called allsides.com that shows issues from the left, right, and the center. service learning hours. Interested in making a hat for the homeless? The library is offering you a chance to earn service learning hours every Wednesday after school from 3 p.m. till 4.15. Hats for some will meet. All supplies are provided. They only need you. Please sign up with Ms. Moyer in the library. If you have any questions, you can ask her in the library. Want to skip a class? Get free snacks and receive a free t-shirt, all while helping save a life? Then donate to the Key Club Inova Blood Drive, being held on November 12th in the Ox Gym. To sign up, you must be at least 16 years of age, 110 pounds, and have parental consent. If interested, please pick up a form for Miss Fu in room F120 and return it back to her by November 5th to pick a time slot and receive a hallway pass. They need as many donors as possible, so tell your friends, parents, and teachers to donate. 
If you have any questions, please ask Ms. Fu or email WTWoodsonKeyClub at gmail.com. There's more information in the CAP kiosk slides. Sophomores and juniors, you'll want to hear this. Governor Schools and Academic Program for the, those gifted in the visual and performing arts. It provides an education different from how it is traditionally taught, and it's a great opportunity to work in small groups and hands-on activities relating to your area of interest. Every effort is made to tailor learning to the needs of the community of learners that compose the program. In fact, there is an interest meeting today at 1030 in Cab Hall. Please plan to attend if you would like to attend, or see Ms. Walter or Ms. Nguyen in student services with questions. That's so cool, Arush. Seems like a great opportunity. Yeah, definitely. Also, I just gotta say, the weather is beautiful today, especially after the wind and rain we've had over the past couple of days. I agree, kinda scary. But I got a question for you. Why couldn't the skeleton keep from being afraid of the storm? I'm not sure. He just didn't have any guts. Sports is up with Chris and Alex on Woodson Overtime. They had a chance to talk to our cheerleader captains. Let's take a look. Welcome to Sports Overtime. Last week, Cheer got second regional semis and second in the districts. Here's an interview with two captains. We're here with two senior cheer captains, Rory and Allison, here to ask some questions about their amazing performance last week. So, you guys finished second in the district, becoming the best cheer team in Woodson history. How does that make you guys feel? Um, that's really exciting, um, because every year we've gotten so much better. We made history our sophomore year, last year, and then this year, and really hoping to go forward and make more history, so. Yeah, it's just really rewarding seeing how we've gotten better over the years. How do you guys look to improve upon your second place at regionals? Tonight. Um, we just really need to go out there and be a lot more confident. Um, hit our stunts, um, and just really be excited when we step out on the mat. Yeah, same thing as we said, just showing confidence. We have all the skills, we just need to be confident. Any final words to our viewers before your amazing performance today, tonight? Um, come out to Hayfield on Wednesday to see us perform at regional finals. Top two to go to states. We're red. Yeah. That was a great interview. Good job, Chris. Cheer has a regional finals tomorrow night at Hayfield at 7. Be sure to be there and wear red. Our cross country team has districts Thursday at Berkeley. Good luck, Cavs. And now we are in the main gym. Volleyball won 3 1 against West Springfield in the finals. Simone Berry was our player of the game. Football plays at Lake Braddock this Friday. Be sure to wear pink. It's a great day to be a Cavs. That's all we have today, folks. Thank you for joining us here on the Did you notice that technical problems are always one of the challenges for the broadcasting class? In our last program, we had some audio problems. We'd like to rebroadcast a previous story by our reporter Vera about our premier inclusion program that Woodson offers. <laughs> Partnership is the place where you get to get to make friends and establish long-lasting relationships. Partnership is all about meeting new people and making friends. Mm -hmm. How many friends have you made? A lot. Really? Yeah. Include include everybody in in activities, and it's all about inclusion. It's like we go into these little families, which are little groups of people in the class, and we do a bunch of fun things with them. That's a combination of. Uh, gen ed peers and students with disabilities and we work together and complete uh, tasks. It's all about having fun. From being in this class, um, I've just gotten to see how other people interact with others and learn that like our brains are all so different and unique and when we all come together it's just really special. In partnership we always work. I uh, work to, as a team. Do we have fun? Yeah, we have fun. What kind of fun stuff do we do? Just dance. Uh, Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy that? I enjoy it. Partnership is about collaborating with um, your peers and learning how to interact and socialize with uh, people who are different than you are. So, this is my friend Hamdi. 
Hamdi has um, a communication iPad, and that's way more in depth than this yes and no paper. But for now, we're using this. I'll ask him questions and he responds based on this. So for example, Hamdi, do you like partnership? Huh. Liar. Huh. <laughs> yes, he does like partnership very, very much. Biggest takeaway that I have from partnership is to accept differences. Huh. Um, a lot of people talk about co things you have in common, but I think the differences we have can really uh, make us even stronger together. And uh, we like to be very accommodating, and through that, uh, uh, we make a lot of cool friendships, just like this one. I've learned to love and admire other people's differences. I really appreciate them. And I've learned that we are also more alike than different in so many ways. When I came along to partnership, my brother was there, and I loved to his face every day and of the school and I love him. My brother is my inspiration. He is one of my he's not only my brother, he's only my best friend. If you have a chance, can you try to ask him if he can come and visit you someday just so I can meet him? Maybe if people didn't take partnership this year, hopefully they could do it when they're in tenth grade next year. Or eleventh. My line is that uh, this is Ben Pygit and thanks for watching the interview video. <laughs>